everybody. Happy Thursday. You made it. You made it. I made it. That's not Tom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Thursday night, 7.30, sharp as usual, episode 23 of Low Expectations, where the beer is great, and we're usually not. We might have upped our game by bringing my buddy Brewery Guy in tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, my buddy Brewery Guy's Ooh, in here tonight the because... You guys are terrible. Tom. Tom, wake up. I'm awake, buddy. Oh, sorry. Right He's here. awake. I'm on my couch, man. Yeah. I'm just enjoying sitting on my couch. Tom, why aren't you over here with us tonight? Uh, I have a little problem. I am... Tonight I'm going to be... We're going to call this Tom's Ale Cam, or the Couch Cam. <laughs> A-I-L. I'll be enjoying some delicious ales. Tonight will be a delicious Canada Dry Ginger Ale. I, I'm i going to love that one. I thought he meant and that. also we'll have a Black Cherry Sparkling Water to try. I'm not drinking tonight. I can only drink clear... I can only eat or drink clear liquids. Uh, I have... Found out Tuesday I've got diverticulitis. I don't know how to say it. Uh, yeah, diverticulitis. And I haven't eaten anything since Monday, except for broth. So I'm, I'm, my brain is fried. I'm on liquid. But I'm here. I'm just enjoying my couch. So back to them. <laughs> yeah, he was really angry when I showed up with a bag of avocados today. <laughs> he got he, he's flown to a rage. Um, so the beer is great. We may be a little bit better because Brewery Guy's here. If you don't know Brewery Guy, you need to check him out on Instagram because my man knows his stuff. Um, my favorite uh, bit that you do is Manja Mondays. I nice. love Manja Mondays. Nice, nice. I think the passion for food is pretty darn close to that passion for beer. Yeah, so. me, me too, me too. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. You can tell on me as well. Um, so tonight, ladies and gentlemen, um, if the title of the episode is Bottle Royale, and we are going to be popping some bottles. So we're going to get into that in a second, but before we do, you know, I got to cover all the housekeeping things. So you're here, which means you found us not only probably on the Facebook group, uh, Low Expectations, but also on the YouTube channel, uh, Low Expectations, and or Instagram, aim.lowest. So if you're watching tonight and you have the slightest twinge of entertainment happen to you at any point during the night like subscribe tom on the ale cam over there is dying because we seem to be we can't hit that pivot point of getting over the 78 subscriber hump. smash that like yeah. button once help a sick guy out yeah. <laughs> help me please it's, it's my last wish tom what are you sipping on over there a delicious ginger ale <laughs> out of this Ooh. wonderful Back to the Future 2 glass. Nice. Not sure if I shared that one before. Back did. to the Future 2. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, so let's get to 100 <laughs> subscribers. It'll be cool. Um, all right. So that being said, hang in there tonight. At some point tonight, I'm going to ask you guys a question. And whoever ans answers, there is no correct answer. I don't even know the correct answer. But whoever answers... Your name is going to go into a drawing. I'm going to throw all the names in the claw game. I'm going to do a live drawing. And somebody's getting one of these bad boys. And, you know, if you haven't, se if you haven't seen all the angles yet, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much. <laughs> Never too much. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, and also, finally, the last thing. Uh, we're, we are, we've pushed 17 episodes out onto Spotify and Apple Music. So some of you said, you know, while you want to, you, you do appreciate the the mug that's attached to this. Some of you said uh, you just like to be able to listen to it too, so you can do that. So we got all your bases covered. All right, enough about that. I think it's time to dive into our first beer and the meat of the show. So, brewery guy, if you wouldn't mind popping that guy open for no us. No problem. Ladies and gentlemen, our first brewski of the evening is going to be Maine Brewing Company. They do a beautiful little IPA called Lunch. Um, it is a 7% ABV, and their words, not mine, it is um, their East Coast version of a West Coast style IPA. My first pour cam, Tom is convinced, he's very worried that I'm going to, oh, I just went off cam, sorry. He's very con concerned that I'm going to mess this up, and I said, you know what? I probably, <laughs> I probably will. <laughs> I probably will. All right, so here we go. And tonight on the pour cam, uh, we have Homie. 
I believe if this glass could make a sound, it would be going, woohoo! <laughs> uh, Tom, who made the glass? Uh, that is from Crazy Designs. A guy named Brett Hengen makes awesome taster sets. He's done The Simpsons. He's done a Ninja Turtles. Thank you, sir. And hey, he just announced that he's doing a six set for uh, The Mandalorian. You can still pre-order those. Sweet. Okay, so... Uh, and I love homie. You know I love homie. Cheers. 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 Thanks, babe. Let's see. Mmm. Soft. Mm -hmm. Soft on the nose. Mm -hmm. Floral, for sure. Nice. Nice head on that. Yeah. Um, nice, nice peach nectar. Fingers. Peach nectar color. You know, mm -hmm. pretty thick, but not hazy like the any IPAs. You know, yeah, it's not golden at all. It's it's yeah. a it's a dark, dark, darker IPA. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But when I went in and inhaled, man, what a fruity floral! Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and the body is so refreshing. In comparison to getting these huge haze bombs that I've been drinking for years. I mean, and it's not totally West Coast either. It's no. still hazy. Mm -hmm. Still got a full, juicy, juicy body. But, I mean, I've loved lunch for since it's been out. So, so Maine is saying intense hop flavors. I don't know about intense. I feel like just right. Yeah, it's balanced. But I think for comparing it to just a regular 6% American IPA or a Pale Ale, this brings a shining, you know, like a radiance of hops. But you're right, balanced. Totally it's, agree. That's a fair point. Um, aromas of tropical citrus fruits, fruits and pine, and I agree with all of those. I even get a little pine on the finish. Not abrasive, just perfect. A little, little touch of pine. Such a good beer. It really Such is. Such a good And beer. you know, the last time I had it, I haven't had it in a year. Last time I had it, I had it with a lobster roll up in Portland last August. And I hadn't had it in like five years. So it that, was such a nice compliment. That may be the best oh way to have <laughs> Dude, that beer. Yeah. Lobster roll yeah. Yeah. with a main lunch? And it was a little oh, shack. Oh, and they didn't have oh. like taps or anything, but they had bottles of it. Wow. So boom, there you go. Oh. Have you been to Maine Brewing? Not not Maine, no, not yet. I've only been around the Portland area. Maine's, okay. I think, is a little outside, right? Uh, Freeport? Freeport, yeah. So, um, yeah, I saw, as I was doing research for tonight's show, I saw, I got to, you know, I was panning through all the pictures of the brewery. It looks like a cool little joint. Well, uh, people, probably not little. But it, yeah. It's, it's an operation. It's been around for a little while. Everyone that I know who's been there said it's pretty awesome. Plus, I mean, you get these so fresh, you know? Yep. Ugh. So this was picked up at, um, you know, my fave, Limerick mm. Bev. So pick that bottle up at Limerick Bev. I actually, they had, not one, they had six different bottles from Maine Brewing. Yeah, dude, my first one was Zoe, which is their Hoppy Amber, yep. and I loved it. Loved it. I just, I was blown away. Plus, again, another nice, unique style we don't see as much in 2021. Tom makes fun of me for this all the time, but my favorite from them is Post Ride Snack. Which is like, oh, yeah. uh, it's almost like a session pail. Yeah, it's yeah. really light. It's a pail, yeah. And it's it's perfect for the post ride snack. Yeah, that's even lighter than Peeper, and Peeper's fantastic. So, yeah, kudos, Maine. Well done. Um, so, I wanted to talk tonight a little bit about, you know, tonight's all about bottles, and Bottle Royale is the name of the show because I feel like cans are now dominating the craft beer landscape. Correct. I feel like, you know, Every week, it's this release, it's that release. Can art, can label art is off it's, the hook. It's, it's crazy. So I feel like, you know, we got to go back and we got to throw a little love the bottle's way. So, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, I would like to take you on a little history tour of beer bottles. Bottles. <laughs> what he said. Bottles. 1570 is the earliest recollection of um, when beer bottles first appeared. And it's a funny story. Um, north of London, the story goes, and I can't remember his name, but it was a parish priest who was also an avid fisherman. Went out fishing one day, and he threw some of his homebrew in a bottle. Took it out, was doing some fishing, forgot his bottle by the river. Went back a couple of days later, it was still there. Popped his bottle open, and it went off. He called it, a, uh, he heard a gunshot. Because OG was, OG bottle it, condition, it was sitting out in the sun, in the warm weather, and 
Secondary fermentation, yeah. man. OG bottle <laughs> conditioning. That's amazing. So that is the first semi-recorded instance of um, 50, someone talking about a bottle. Of 1570? Beer. 1570. About, 400, about 450 years ago. Um, yeah, crazy, right? So I'm thinking jugs before that? Were they in like ceramic? That's a different show, Brewery <laughs> Guy. <laughs> You're always thinking jugs. I guess I might say it. No, yeah. Um, I was actually, more of a kid's man. Actually, as we move forward, you're going to see that over in England, specifically with um, the porter style of beer, yeah. was stone jugs. Yeah, but the problem with them was, it's too heavy, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's all right. crazy. So about 75 years later, after that first recorded instance, um, England instituted something called a glass tax. And what the glass tax did, and it lasted for about, oh, I don't know, on and off 40, 50 years was that um, it really prohibited, inhibited, proscribed the availability of glass. It was just too expensive for the people and mostly it was just the nobility that had access to it. So um, bottling, glass blowing, and this was all like no mass production. These were like yeah, hand blown glass bottles. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that really kind of put a damper on the ability for people to do that. Um, because of that, bottled beer remained a luxury and was only used by nobility and to export um, for about 150 years after that. So it wow. kind of really was like the dark ages of beer bottling. Wow. Um, as I was just saying, they looked at stone jugs as an option, especially because the English did a lot of porters. Yeah. And that was primarily the beer they put in there. Um, but super strong, super safe, but not really... Practical, practical. Yeah. They're so freaking heavy. I can't even imagine. <laughs> imagine picking it's up like, like a kettlebells, dude. <laughs> exactly. Forget about it. Um, so moving on. Bottles. Uh, around 1870 was when "quote unquote" mass production of bottles started. Oh wow. Yeah, I would have um, never guessed that. Once again, over in England, there's this guy, a guy or a brewery named Whitbread, um, and he started one of the first big bottling operations where they actually had um, glass molds that were in three pieces. One side, one side, and top. And so that's how they kind of mass-produced the bottles. Wow. The stumbling block, they had to hand-cork everyone. Wow. So they had like an army of workers that were just hand-corking bottles. Like homebrewing, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we've done the hand-corking at homebrewing before. And it's, you know, you get it in there. Most places let you um, let you borrow it though for free for a few Do days. You, to you don't keg? Oh, I haven't gotten there yet. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, kegging is the way to go, dude. Oh, because yeah, people bottling is such a pain. In oh there. yeah, yeah. That's what I. That's what I was saying. So that was eighteen seventy. Huh? Eighteen seventy. So right around that time. So England figured it out. They had the mass production of the bottles. They just didn't have. The capping down. It took an American to figure that one out. And not only... Well, listen to this. Around 1880-ish is when it started. Um, well, to be honest, Henry Barrett in around 1880 was an Englishman. He um, invented the screw top. So he invented it. But it took an American about 13 years later named William Painter. William Painter started mass, being able to mass produce and cap bottles wow. on like an assembly line. Wow. Out of Northeast Philadelphia. Love it. We are the city it. of brotherly subs, you know what I mean? It. So out of Northeast Philly, the company was called Crown Cork and Seal. And Tom, true story, back in my previous life, I was a corporate health insurance representative. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, you have no idea how exciting that was. One of my clients, Crown Cork and Seal. No, no way. way. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then you read this and you must have been like, it was meant to be. Small world, <laughs> A freaking 130 years later. It's insane. Yeah, they're, and they're, they're still a viable company today. Oh my gosh. Isn't that nuts? Rich history. Yeah. Um, 1870. One big development in the beer contribution market. This guy named Louie. 
Louis Pasteur. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, man. He he started boiling the bottles, and good things happen. Yeah. We stopped getting so sick in our tummies. Yeah. All right, and we're almost mm. done, folks. Hang now, in there. Now the lactose makes us sick in our tummies. Oh, too much lactose all the time. <laughs> Finally, around 1940, we hit a little bit of a bump again. What happened around 1940? War. WW. WW. We're not talking George W. We're talking WW. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So everything was scarce. Everything was scarce. So full circle from fishing on the bank, leaving your bottle in the sun to today where we have all these awesome bottles. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, that is your long, arduous tour through the history of bottled beer. Bottles. Cheers. So I am super happy. I haven't had Maine uh, lunch probably in about 9 to 12 months. Yes. And I need to do it more often. Same as me, then. Yes, I would say more often. It's nice to support them, especially as well, you know? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So how's life? Everything good? I mean, I'm sitting here with you, enjoying a couple good brews on you. That's always a good thing for me, man. Well, no, no not the second one's not on me. You brought me a little present tonight, didn't okay, you? Okay, we're going around two with that. We are going around. I was just two with that. I, I I don't want to kill pallets with it because it's definitely going to be. Well, did you see charged. where did you see where we're going around three? I I looks like pastry stoutish, but I won't didn't you take look... me to pastry town? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. I took it right out of my cellar. That's funny. Is it last year's pastry stout or this year's? No, it's a brand new one. I think I just got it's it. It's not a pastry it up town. last week. It is an, oh, it's not. It's an imperial double pastry stout. Oh, which fantastic! Because I had the pastry town once a couple weeks ago, so I was hoping it was something different. Uh, it's well, we'll get to it. I'll, uh, it's really, it's cool. Wait, you, how are you going to drink it, Tom? I can't. <laughs> so we're going to cap you it, so will. you can drink it when you get back. Oh, I got a couple bottles. Oh, perfect. Tommy Bottles. Right. It's his nickname, Tommy Bottles. Tommy Bottles. I love it. <laughs> it's funny, B, because um, my whole crew is has been for a while going back towards Pilsner's and going back towards Mild. So we just drank a five liter ESB at Bocce. ESB, dude. Five liters from Forest to Maine. Oh. Fantastic. And um, we have this big joke now when we get together. One of the rules, some of our tastings is only bottles no cans which is you know a good thing because you got three four hundred beers in your cellar yeah and the one thing you're not doing is drinking them fast enough well and you're you know? not sitting at home like throwing bottles down i, I never do i, I rarely because i want to hang out with a friend you yeah. know i want to enjoy it with someone or enjoy it with my wife which is a great point because i think one of the great things about bottles yeah. is you know it they, they they're for sharing Yes. They are 100% for sharing. You can pop a can on your own. That's fine. But you definitely, when, and Tom and I talk about this a lot, when we chase bottles, it's for the specific reason. Like uh, in our crew, it's almost like they're the super friends. They all have their special adjunct power. So we all know which adjuncts which person likes. So we'll go out of our way to get them. Yes. Like, um, uh, like one of our buddies is like a huge hazelnut fan. Another mm -hmm. one is a huge vanilla fan. Mm -hmm. um, Someone's coconut, I'm sure. Yeah, there's a couple coconut people. <laughs> I fall in the coconut camp myself. Um, but someone's a pistachio guy, so yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. Um, all right, so what do you got for us, man? Tell me a story. All right. So um, uh, you know I'm a gigantic fan of Richmond's, one of Richmond's finest, yes. the Vale Brewery. So it's no surprise that I love them, considering that their brewer and their owner now – or the brewer in general who started the whole thing, his name is Matt Tarpey, and he studied under probably what most craft beer people would think are the most important names in craft beer. S three specific brewers and breweries that he had done either internships at or that he had learned from over, you know, anywhere from a few weeks to a few months period. So one of them is in Belgium. And two of them in Vermont. Nice. So I'm sure you can probably at least guess the Vermont ones if you don't guess the Belgian ones. Uh, does the, the name Sean pops in The my name head. Sean should pop in your head. <laughs> that is correct. That is one of the two Vermont breweries that he studied under. Now, can you get better than studying under Sean Hill, who, I don't know, the last eight or nine years has taken brewery of the, the world. world. Yeah. Not like USA, but... Planet Earth, this brewery in Vermont, 
number one. So that's good experience. And then, can you guess the second one? Here, let me give you a rinse kit. Another another Vermont brewer? Mm-hmm. Um, you can name the brewery, too. You don't have to name the brewer. <sighs> Who did he go? Careful, B. I'm not sure that's refreshing Deer Park water. It's not. It's not. Ooh. Is that going to hurt our sponsorship? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Dude, is that jug still kicking? Yes. That thing doesn't. Oh, <laughs> refreshing. It, it's refreshing. <laughs> but this is what we're drinking. Sorry, brewery guy. I flubbed that one. <laughs> and he's got multiple. He literally has three brands sitting here. How am I supposed to? I had a one and third chance of hitting the right I'm, one. I'm a liquid connoisseur. He is a. Liquid All right. Connoisseur. Would you like? To he's make... a clear liquid connoisseur. <laughs> so, so let me talk about the beer. Enough of enough of the. Um, we'll get back to the brews in a second. Since we want to pour this, yeah, I know you're thirsty as I am. Yeah, buddy. So, um. He loves to do wild ales, and he loves to do spontaneous fermentation, being that he studied at Cantillon in Belgium, which is my personal favorite brewery, and the Vale probably is my second. So um, he won't call them Lambic beers because they aren't from Lambic in Belgium, but he calls them Lambic-inspired beers. Okay. So this is wild or open fermentation. It's a Lambic. It's a blend of um, farmhouse barrels, 15 months farmhouse barrels they blended a bunch of them then they conditioned them on blackberries and they conditioned them on montmorency cherries which i love what's a montmorency cherry? i believe um it's a species that comes out um it's kind of uh, popular in Mich michigan i think okay and um some breweries do like three or four blends of cherries it's crazy and then they bottle condition this john for 18 months so, so 15 months then, then 18 months. So you're talking like the love put into a beer like this. And I only got one bottle. So I was like, well, if we're coming tonight for bottles, I got to bring something nice. Because I had to bring a little high expectation to low expectation. Yeah. Sorry. We'll, so we'll, I, wanna, I wanted you to we'll pour it down. So they can see I'm expecting the color to be gorgeous. Maybe deep ruby. Maybe a little grape. I'm not 100% sure. That's Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah! Ooh. Oh, almost um cranberry pink. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Very nice. Take a look at that. Kids. So it's coming in at nine and a half percent. Wow, that is just delicious smelling. Yeah, a nice, very light hue uh, pink on the head. It was. A, it was. I got also a very great. Not pillowy, very loose head. Yeah. And yeah. mine dropped really yeah. quick. Yours did drop quick. Do you want me to add a little more there, sir? Sure. Well, my... I left a little room on top. Good work. There we go. There it is. It's going to... Oh, there it fluffs up. There oh, we go. Fluffer. A little bubbly. Um, so I barely put my nose up there, and it was bursting with cherries. <laughs> yeah, it is. Wow, that smells fantastic. It really does. The, oh, that, my the, goodness. Just so... And the, the word I have is, it's, <laughs> it's not a clear liquid, Listen, buddy. Listen, <laughs> no, no frothy, thick liquids, no seeds. <sighs> uh, I'm sorry. Can you smell it from it here, though? Because, I mean, delicious. it's coming. <laughs> it's so scrubby on the nose, oh, man. It's coming down wind hard. Cheers, man. Cheers, Thank man. You, buddy. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. I can't wait. This ginger ale is pretty kick-ass, folks. If you like ginger ale, this one's gingery. Definitely is that a, that imported from Canada one? Yeah, definitely ginger. And I love Canadians, so it's a little uh, low on the head, but, man, delicious. Light amber color, almost gingery. Oh, my goodness. I feel so bad so, for him. So this is insane because on the nose and up front, it's like, hi, I'm fruit, and I've brought a whole lot of fruit, and I parked the fruit bus outside, and we're going to fruit all night long. But then, once you drink it, it's like, I'm going to take all the moisture in your mouth, and just... So it's two opposing forces yeah, crashing beautifully in your yeah. mouth together. The yeast kills it, doesn't it? I wow. mean, he, the yeast is so, so balanced, wow. bringing that puckering tart as you mm. said and then balancing out with all the fruit i mean oh my goodness dude and my favorite style is fruit lambic so for me it doesn't get much better than this that. is your favorite style fruit lambic is my favorite style 
What's your favorite style, babe? That's a great question, dude. I feel like I'm a chameleon. I bounce around, man. Well, I mean, you know, January, I'll drink a stout in July, but January is always nice for a barrel aged imperial stout. Farmhouse is nice in May. My pal keeps shooting. Like you said earlier, um, last summer, um, you know my side gig, my side hustle. I was working at the beer garden all yeah. summer last, yeah. and I was like so hot every day. Yeah. I couldn't even drink an IPA. All I wanted was Pilsner's Lagers, Pilsner's Lagers, Pilsner's. And I like, it reset my palate. Yeah. Now I crave them. Like, it's great. That five liter ESB, yeah, I would have been all up in that. Yeah, man. It is pretty awesome. In See, fact, I, I, was, I wouldn't call it the chameleon. I'd go more for like village bicycle. <laughs> Are you referring to an actual bicycle or Not like the village bicycle? Everybody's had a ride. <laughs> It's all over. Are, are you calling me a whore, Tom? No. <laughs> Not at all. He's pretty Not because angry. you're drinking beer at my bar in my basement <laughs> while I sit on my couch. Well, it's only going to get worse when we actually drink your beer. Yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to up the ante. And... <laughs> He's an angry oh, patient. He's... <laughs> Show me on the doll where it hurts. <laughs> That aroma, bro. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is a nice one, buddy. Now, it's interesting because I have I have a dirty little secret I feel compelled to share with you. Sure. This is your favorite brewery. Uh, Cantina's my favorite. This is my second favorite, I would say. I don't... I love the beer from Vale. I don't like hanging out at Vale. Too industrial? When I go to Richmond, it's my least favorite bar to hang out at. Because? Too many taps. No, it's just like... <laughs> There's no love, I feel. It's all very... You can stimulate the love, right? So, like, for the... F well, I mean, I'm sure Tom knows that. But for, for the for the first time I went there, I felt that, like, right away. But I started interacting with each and every bartender. And at first, the dude's like, yeah, dude, if you wanted to call here, we don't have a phone number. Like, we don't need one. We suck. And then I started breaking them down. And the more times I go, the, I just go, I'm kind of like... Philly's in the house. Philly loves the veil. And they really warm up to you. So I think, like, my extroverted personality mm -hmm. brings that out there. Um, but obviously, Triple Crossing has bocce courts and the hot honey pizzas. So mad love to that place. Which is my second favorite place yeah. in Richmond. Because <laughs> I go down and I just wallow in the answer the entire time I'm down there. Yeah. That's my homies. Those are my people. Yeah. Well, Ann is one of the greatest guys. We ever. rock the house hard when we go to the answer. Yeah. I just feel like, and it's easy. Because everybody there is like, buddy! Yeah. And everybody at the Vale was like, here's your beer. That's just my personal experience. No, no, I totally understand. I totally understand. Their beer is fabulous. Yeah. And, and like, Tom is so sick of me outlining how I would do Richmond. In fact, if you cut to him right now, he'll give you the grumpy face because he's heard the story. In fact, he even, I think he even one night said the story in my voice, repeated it verbatim, word for word. But the it's, first, this is my first stop when angry. I go to Richmond. I go there and I get my beer. And I have one. I get all my to-go beer and I leave. Mm -hmm. And then I go to Triple yeah. Crossing. Oh, then you go to Triple Crossing. And I, get, I split a pizza with somebody. Yeah. And we hang out at Triple Crossing. And then I go to The Answer. And I spend, spend the, the rest, rest of, of the, the night at, at The, the answer. answer. Yeah. yeah. Well, and The Answer is also open later than The Vale, which is why you got to go to The Vale first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when was the last time you were down there? Um, two weeks ago. No. I mean... <laughs> so we went down for The Vale's anniversary. Um, How was the COVID anniversary? Was it weird? Um, you know what? They had everything separated in areas mm -hmm. and they had strict guidelines on letting a certain amount of people in. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, Saturday at noon, there's no way we're getting a table just by walking up. And we walked up there, my cousin, his wife, the, uh, their two kids and me and Karen, and we got a table for an hour. Score. And while they were getting the table, I was getting the 36 bottles and 36 cans that I had paid a couple mortgage payments for. And it was amazing. <laughs> and you can get that lovely liquid shipped right to your house now. Yeah, which is just on a whole different level. I mean, it makes it almost too easy. Yeah, we, we covered that. Is He's going stay puffed right I now just, on us. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he took the antibiotics or if he <laughs> took... Something from the cover of Eminem's album. I'm not 100% sure. I saw him. He, I came in earlier and he was back on the printing press in the back room. And he ran off 100 shirts and all it said on each shirt was clear liquid. Was, I was a little concerned. It also said no seeds because the guy's not allowed to eat them. 
So talk to me about food at the answer. Good, right? Really good. Um, I mean, I'm, first of all, loving Asian food. And you have from the front restaurant to the back to choose from. So the menu is awesome. I don't spend enough time in Mekong. Mm -hmm. I, I I should because the tapless there is fabulous and the food there is fabulous. I just And wait, hold on. You know what else is fabulous? The bottles. The last bottle. Dude, I had a Braxis when I went there, which is awesome. I mean, we can get a Braxis easier now. But they have plenty of bottles even at Mekong to choose from, which is awesome. I always get the salt and pepper fries. Nice. And I always, always get the wake and bake fried rice. Always. I did have that. Always. I did have that when I went there one time. Yeah. Always. Yeah, it's those really those good. are like my, my go to Your staples. Yep. So yeah, it's, it's just a great place. Yeah. Have you done any of the um, non-trifecta breweries down yes, there? Yes, uh, Final Gravity. I oh, go, nice. I go to Final Gravity, yeah. and there's a really sweet barbecue joint next door that lets you bring the food in. So that usually is like my little side hustle. Like my, It's like my local's tip. Is That's that awesome. I asked the brewers, and they were like, I was like, if you weren't going here, here, or here, where, where would, would you, you go? go? And they were like, go get some barbecue and go hang out at Final Gravity. Because there's like a homebrew store right next door. There is a homebrew store. I've been there. Yeah. I've been to Final Gravity. It's really cool. Yeah. It's funny because a lot of breweries that I've been to, some of them you realize have this history where they started as a homebrew store. Like Funky Buddha, which closed down, I went there and they still had all the homebrew stuff. And then they were taken over by the big boys, unfortunately. So it happens. They shut them, they shut them out at that place. And then Ithaca, I used to go to Ithaca Brewing 12 years ago. And they all had Half the store was homebrewing equipment, and the other half was taps. Well, that's that's where the, all these guys started. Yeah, that's, no, it's that's such their... a cool history. So, um, was the second Vermont brewery um, Alchemist? It was the Alchemist B! Good work, man. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Cheers to that. The so Alchemist. He studied under John Kimmick at the Alchemist, who is one of the, my favorite people in the world. And he studied under Sean Heldhill Farmstead, and he studied, uh, he studied under Jean Valois and Cantillon. How so, did he work the Cantillon connection? So, that's a fantastic question. There is another podcast that he tells the whole story, which is amazing. But the Penny version of the story is um, he saw him at a festival up in Vermont, and he said to him, listen, I'd love to come. And Jean Valois said, okay, but I can't pay you. If you want to come and watch me, you can watch me all you want. So Matt Tarpy got married, and he went on his honeymoon. <laughs> To Europe, and he went to Belgium as his stop, as one of his stops, nice. and his wife was totally cool with him. So he spent two weeks at Cantillon all day, as much as he could, learning everything he could about, obviously, open fermentation, lambics, nice. um, and and um, just you know, you know what? Beer. I think I need to go back, and I need to give Vale another shot, and I need yeah. to just roll in there, and I need to force them, force them to have a little bit of oomph. <laughs> you tell him, listen. Philly's in the house, and I have the lowest expectations, so make them Don't better. make me go live from here. Um, I have this itch in the back of my head that there is some type of Philly connection with Vale, too. Am I wrong about that? Mm, not that I know of. I'm going to have to but research that. Yeah, we should, look that, we should look that up. Follow up. All right. Um, so, we have a topic to discuss while we're on the topic of history. Let's do it. All right? I have a little uh, I have a little quizzerino for you. It's not... Don't worry. We haven't ruled Tom out. We're still going to test Tom's beer knowledge skills later in the show. When he's not sleeping. Or making t <laughs> angry t-shirts or playing with action figures. <laughs> I'm interacting with our audience. Oh. That's what I'm doing. Wow. Holy, holy moly. Are you doing that? Yes, sir. You want to... You want to... You want to... You want to address some of the folks out there? Because I'm doing a terrible job. At that. Uh, the, brew, the Brew Pube Explorer just asked where I was. And uh, I'm on my couch. I'm currently not drinking. So here I am hanging out on the couch watching these guys drink beer in my studio. That's a running joke. <laughs> that, that giant bottle of beer. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, the comments have been pretty cool. Yeah, I'm just behaving, guys. I got to be good. Ten days and I'm good. I, you can be do it. So I'm, just, I'm behaving. They're, everyone's trying to be a bad influence on me. <laughs> well, I'm shocked. Uh, Kristen, did I read that correctly? You would like me to let him smell it? Kristen, it's not that kind of show. Um, <laughs> uh, Broopy is, was worried about you. Yeah, Tom is in the penalty box. I like that. Um, oh, Travis. Travis, I didn't say Vale blows. Let me, let me back that statement up. 
<laughs> I really, really, really like the beer from Vale. I just don't like the vibe. Doesn't. After that, he said, "I love their beers, but the place is stupid." Okay. Yeah, it doesn't really scratch my itch. It's, it doesn't make me want to hang out there. And I didn't like I didn't go a full brewery guy on them. And I didn't force them to like me. I just kind of like grabbed my beer and was like, well, you know, I got an awesome plan B and plan C. I don't have to. So, but, you know, the beer is so good. There. It is so good. I've never been. And when we go, I'm excited to. Spend... <laughs> I know. Soon. Uh, when we go, I'm excited to actually be. It, to, to, to experience what you say and, and see if I agree or not. Well, uh, and, and for those of you playing along at home, what are the odds that Tom agrees with me? <laughs> Slim and none. <laughs> all right, so ready? Ready. As I was doing all this research on the history of bottled beer, I came across some interesting history about beer in America. Specifically, the oldest breweries in america so i was wondering I, I have a list here of the top 10 oldest breweries in america and i'm not going to hold you to in order in fact i was going to share this with you and before the show i was going to i was going to see a brewery guy when he's like no he's like i i, I want to see how many of these because i have an idea i want to see how many of these i know so i'm going to say i'm going to put the over under at four if you know more than four of these I will be incredibly impressed. I, I was going to give myself three. I, I knew I'm three. I'm take the under on myself as I, a little I while. knew three. Okay. Okay. I like it. Four is like perfect. Are you going with oldest and still functioning? Or just the ten oldest? Oldest. Okay. Okay, uh, buddy. All right, here we go. Obviously, Yingling, which we all know. So, Yingling is actually the oldest brewery in America. Established... 1829, Dave Yingling of Pottsdale, Pennsylvania. Oldest beer, Lord Chesterfield. Wait, Pottsville. What'd I say? Pottstown. That's because I'm in Pottstown all the time. Pottsville. <laughs> and, you are in Pottstown, says your son. And oh, Yingling Lager. Isn't there a beef with Molson there? Isn't Molson? Or do they not count as America because they're in Canada? Correct. Ah. Mm. Oh, I mean, yeah, it is. there you go. Yeah. Okay. Eight dog. A clarification question from In the Mix. Okay, now, I definitely think I have two solid locks. And one of them is General Lafayette. Lafayette Hill? No, yeah, Lafayette Hill is General Lafayette. Nope. Is that because it's not being run anymore, like Tom said? Maybe, I don't know. Well, we need to look at We that need to one figure up. this out. Because that one is 100% one of the oldest. It might even. It might even be number two. But anyway, we'll look that up. Um, Tom, can you do something instead of just you know, playing with toys? I, I was that. <laughs> Look at the brewery guy making himself at home. <laughs> so, all right. Yes, so, <laughs> What's up with that, sir? The interweb. Remember Tom um, said his brain wasn't working too good earlier? My, <laughs> I, I have to guess this because I had an argument with someone one time that the Budweiser in Eastern Europe was older than the Budweiser in... United States, and that's false. So Anheuser-Busch is one of my guesses. Anheuser-Busch is correct. It is the fifth oldest brewery Love in it. the country. 1852, Eberhard, Anheuser, and Adolphus Busch. St. Louis, Missouri, oldest beer, Bud. Most famous beer, Bud. Bud heavy. <laughs> um, so here's what we're going to do. Well, when, once you get three wrong, you're done. You okay. have one wrong. No, I like it, right. I like it, I like it. Otherwise, we'd be here all night, dude. Um, I'm going to just go stay with straight corporate America and go Coors. Coors, you say? Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. That is incorrect. Uh, Coors is not on there. Coors is not on there. Okay. So. Two strikes. I'm going to. I had his two strikes. Um, but I like you, so I'm going to say. Well, Tom's going to tell, tell, tell us if my first strike is right or wrong, though. Yeah. You know, don't Are you looking up Don't Lafayette over there? Do you don't know how to use the don't interweb? Count. No, he's looking at llama cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> it's a boot. Llama to boot. <laughs> that's not. That's my llama noise. Do llamas make noise? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right. They're spinners too. They're crazy. Brewery guy, you are All right. too right, too wrong. Too right, too wrong. All right, so let's go with... Trying to think of the one who makes. Um... I like you, so I'm just gonna tell you, don't overthink. 
Don't overthink. Sierra Nevada. Man. So that was 1979. We're done, so sir. Everything's before 79. We are done, sir. All right, All right so let me ahead. walk you through them. Ready? Throw it. The 10th oldest brewery in the United States is Leinenkugel. 1867, Jacob Leinenkugel and John Miller, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Oldest beer, Leinenkugel's original lager. Coors was founded in 1873. Most famous beer. I'm not there yet, buddy. I'm at 1867. Thank you, Tom, for defending me. Ninth, Frankenmuth Brewery. Never heard of it. Uh, Frankenmuth, Michigan. Frankenmuth Hefeweizen. Most famous beer is the Hefeweizen. Eighth oldest brewery, 1860. August Shell Brewing yeah, Company. I, I have Shell's that. original is their oldest beer and their most famous beer out of New Ulm, Minnesota. The seventh is Stevens Point. Stevens Point. Uh, Stevens Point, Wisconsin, 1857. Point Special Lager, Point Special Lager. Miller Brewing Company. Oh my God, I chose Coors instead of Miller. I tried to steer you back on the right path. 1855. Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. Uh, <laughs> we already did Anheuser-Busch. Minhas Craft Brewery. 1845. Monroe, Wisconsin. Uberbach and Boxer Lager. Ooh, Paps PBR. That is the no-brainer. Jacob Best, 1844, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. P-B-R. Schaefer, Schaefer Brewing. We used to sell a lot of Schaefer over at Jeffersonville Beverage back in the day. 1842. New York, New York. Schaefer Beer. All right, so there we are. I must have hit 11 with Coors because he said 1873. So, uh, Coors would be 11. Yeah. My list does not contain Schaefer. Schaefer's not on my list of 10 at all. Interesting. Yeah, I wonder... I wonder where Schaefer went on this list. Did you find General Lafayette? I didn't. I was actually just trying to find, find the But that's pretty cool Schaefer. because I, back in the day, I used to poke around General Lafayette a little bit. I drank there. Oh, yeah. 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 I looked they used to do this uh, raspberry mead, man. It was humongous. It would take care of business. Huge humongous. Yeah, yeah. They haven't brewed, I think, in a few years, but they were brewing for a long time, man. So, you know, bottles have been around for a while. Beer's been around for a while. It's just, you know, it's kind of cool looking back every once in a while. People get too focused on, like, um, the f shiny, flashy objects. So this is a classic style. I mean, it's not a Lambic, but it's Lambic inspired. Inspired, yeah, exactly. So, you know, Cantillon is a beautiful beer. <laughs> it's a beautiful beer. I don't get enough of it. It's a beautiful beer. Mm. That's fantastic. I love that we're hitting all styles tonight, so I'm glad you prepped me for that. We are we are kind of like riding the wave. And as we usually do here in uh, Low Expectations Land, we're going to end the night with one of Tom's. Uh, Tom, can we call this your favorite style? Or one of your favorite styles? Is that accurate? I love them all. But, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I really do love them all. But I would have to say uh, it's the one that I like to collect the most. Yeah. Instruments. I love to hunt them down and, and, and catch them and share them with friends. So, yeah, we could call it one of my favorites. Yeah, Tommy Bottles. If you look in Tommy Bottles' library, A through W is probably pastry stats. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, folks. That was a clear liquid. Um, so here we go. We are moving on to beer number three. Um, it is called Spring... Let me see if I can get this right. Experiment. And uh, Tom, do you want to oh talk about this at all? Goodness. So I was super excited for this beer. Really super excited. Because it's my favorite Easter candy. Uh, my mom still asks, what, what What do you want for Easter? What, what kind of candy do you want? And I always get one bag of this. They're uh, the little... They're on the actually on the um, cover of the... On the label of the beer. They're those mm -hmm. little... Like pastel colored the eggs. There's chocolate inside, but then it, it's shaped like an egg. It's a little bit bigger, a lot bigger than an M and M. Um, I think they're made by Nestle. They have the same color, purple bag, just like that. And they're they're just great. I love them. And that's what they used to make oh, this stout. Nice. And wow. then, is it taped? If you've ever had them, the oh, taste yeah. of that yeah. shell. Yeah. It's probably it's probably taped, guys. Yeah. It, it is it taped. Came, yeah. yeah, it's when when I had those shipped, I didn't I didn't pick them up. 
It's it's a, it's a oh yeah, it does. It tastes just like the like the like they said. It tastes. I, like and I don't know this candy, Tom. I, I would think, say I think you will. I'll find the. He uh, knows it. It's one of the most underestimated candies, even oh, as yes. an adult. Uh-huh. I like it, and the milk chocolate helps to melt as you're eating it, which is why it's so good. Because for some reason, it's better than M and M's, and you wouldn't think it was better than M and M's. I don't really like. Way better. I don't like candy. I'm not a. Neither candy do guy. I. But these peanut butter for cups. Me. That's my go-to. I rest my case. If you have to. I don't like candy peanut butter cups. I love them. If I have <laughs> I say I love them. Nate, what am I saying, Nate? Come on. I, I called them out. If I have to eat a can, if you're holding if you're holding one of those plastic pistols to my head that's full of sugar water. Remember those when you were a kid? Those those wax pistols that you could no, never. of course, of course, of course, right, of course. That, that's that's my frame of reference. Anyway, while he pours, we'll talk about how he drinks candy from Schmoogies all the time. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, there we go. And I, then the I candy eggs right there. Yeah. There we Come go. back, candy Spring eggs. Spring experiment from Equilibrium Brewing, which I, I. What do I? How do I describe your love affair with Equilibrium bottles, Tom? Uh, they're great bottles. Thank Plus, you. Plus. On top of them being ha- and producing really great stuff almost oh, all the time. My goodness. My <laughs> house is what fif- a fifty minute, a beautiful fifty minute drive to their brewery. So let me show you real quick. That it's Cad, it's a uh, Cadbury mini eggs. That's them right there. See them? There <laughs> Cadbury mini eggs. Like he showed his dog or something. He's so proud of it. <laughs> all right. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Spring Experiment Imperial Double Pastry Stout. 11% ABV, heavy chocolate moss on the base, Tom. Condition on mini candy eggs. Cake? Mi- cake? Is cacao! There- There's, There's cacao. cacao. Yes, there is. There's cake mix. Yep. And Madagascar vanilla. And our good old friend, lactose. <laughs> Yeah, so. First of all, people be yes. hating on the cake mix. I think the cake mix is going to make the candy eggs delicious. Well, the nose on this is <laughs> pure fudge brownie. It is wow. You know what? I expected more vanilla cake mix, but you're right. It's fudge brownie it's and pure, big brownie. Pure fudge brownie. I got a totally different taste from the nose. I, I'm interested to see what you got. How you oh, so you, you've already had a bottle of this. Yes, I did uh, this weekend. Before I got sick. Mm. Pre diverticulitis. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to let it open up a little bit. The carbonation super low. Sweetness hitting on the finish, finally getting a little cake mix. I'm actually getting some bitter cacao. I was about to say, I get that on the finish. It's yes, bitter. as opposed to I expected sweeter. Mm. It's, a, it's a roller coaster. There's a lot going on. So I got a whole lot of the, the actual candy shell from those eggs. Are you tasting that candy shell? Like that almost vanilla, sugary, sweet candy Not shell. at first because you get the bitter cacao, but then it hits yeah. with the, kind of the bitterness of the finish, too. And the second sip was much less bitter. Yeah. But we're also coming from that super tart lambic. <laughs> so our palate needs to kind of adjust a little bit, too. That's what I was going to Maybe we should do the pastry stuff second. Because <laughs> I knew that was going to just crush the palate. Well, it's it's pick your poison. Do we want to yeah, go, it's either do we wanna go super sweet and, and lactose and bitter and then go... To the to the to the sandpaper lambic, or do we want to go in the opposite direction? Yeah, agreed. Pick your poison. Totally agreed. But um, interesting. Ah, oh, Tom, this is nice. This is weird. So Tom, weirdly nice. Yeah. You, yeah. I, you know, I just want a teeny bit more carbonation. Just a teeny bit more. No. Mine when I, I mean, it could be slightly different by bottle, but I didn't have. I was happy with the carbonation at the time. I would like a tad more girth to the body i'd like it a little meatier give me the abv again you like girth i do like girth 11 percent 11 percent yeah i mean there's a lot of there's like a lot of good going on here the madagascar vanilla is opening up for sure like almost custardy i'm not getting any of that yet i'm not it's opening up i am getting um my my Predominant flavors I'm experiencing are the chocolate malt base, mm-hmm. the cacao, and I'm getting a little bit of the candy. Yeah. But I, the vanilla will be nice. I, be- I get a little, a little bit of the custard vanilla at the end with the candy egg. I feel like they're together. But nothing is over-pronounced. Like, no, no, nothing no, 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 no. is 
punching you in the face. And when he told me about this beer, I was like, wow, this is going to be like an Easter candy train. And it's yeah. not. Yeah. It's not at all. Yeah. In fact, I, I wish it was a little sweeter, I think. Okay, so uh, I did not buy any of this, this Wednesday's release, but they took that same base and conditioned it on like thousands of peeps. So you have the extra sugar and the extra marshmallow. That's where I drew the line, and I said, I'm not interested at all. Uh, Diabetes. That that came out yesterday. Oh, wait a second. Uh, Let me see if I can get this right. (laughs) That's not beer. When are they going to make real beer like a man's beer? I hate those people. Me too. I hate those yeah. people. Me so too. same, same, same beer, but with thousands of peeps at it. But you can say that's that because just... you spent all of last summer drinking lagers and pilsners. I did. I so did. you have actually legitimate, justifiably, are able to. Make I may have morphed into that guy last summer. And I just didn't say <laughs> it out loud. <laughs> and then winter brought you right back mm-hmm. at it. No, I, I, I enjoy it all. There's very little I don't enjoy. I mean, most styles, I love. You know. Yeah, I don't really dis. You know what? I don't like um, Flanders. I don't oh, Flanders, like right. Flanders. Red or brown, huh? Or Ned. I don't like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't you don't like to like at at Monks the Flanders Red? No. Nope. Oh my gosh, I love that beer. Really good. I'm that's sorry. A, that's an amazing beer. I'm sorry, I don't. Wow. Like it. it's, okay. It's, it's, it's just surprising. Like, it's like it feels and tastes like vinegar to me. It is very vinegary. There's a vinegar base for sure and in the I just flavor can't, profile. It's just not my yeah. jam. But other than that, man, I'm all in. Like, dude, you said a five liter bottle of ESL, ESB, ESB from uh, Forest, Forest of Maine. Maine. And I was just like, huh? Because really I was trying cool. to chase down some Forest of Maine for tonight. And I didn't get around to it. But yeah. Yeah, they're they're actually just like the Val. I think Forest of Maine's on their fifth anniversary. Wow. Yeah. That how long. cool is that? That's really cool. Yeah. All right. So we have to. Jump back into our timeline because as see, Tom wanders off and he he's on the ale cam and I just don't follow any freaking guide at all. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the night. Uh, yeah, in the mix is literally twisting in the wind over there. He's like, this guy's a train wreck. Never do this again. Uh, we... No, there have been some solid comments popping through. <laughs> oh, am, am I getting roasted over there? I actually just a touch. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna isolate some audio. I, I hate all of you. Um. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I'm, look at me. Look at right. Look look right into the YouTube. I'm talking to you. You got a problem? YouTube. We'll talk. All right. Look the YouTube. Right the, the diabetes. The Ladies YouTube. and gentlemen, it is look time to play. YouTube's. So you want to be a cicerone? In the mix. Take us in. So you want to be a cicerone? All right, folks, here we go. It's that time of night where we test Mr. Clear Liquid's beer knowledge. He, when I brought this topic up, he was excited and at the same time apprehensive. But he shouldn't be because he is killing it. He has surprised me. He has surprised himself. He has surprised his entire family about how well <laughs> he can he can identify what's going on in the beer world. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's see if Tom is going to be a sister. And you want to see tonight? You want to you want to jump in? I, I Here, mean, we yeah. Here we go. Uh, yeah. All right. First question. In so you want to be a cicerone is uh, it's primarily better to drink beer from a glass rather than a bottle or can because. The presentation is nicer for the consumer. It looks pretty. The beer is less likely to skunk. Consumer will experience more of the aroma. It's less likely to spill. Tom, I'm going to throw it to you first. I'm. That's super easy. I mean. If C wasn't there, I would I would I would try and go for A, but for me it's definitely C. Uh, also, please small disclaimer: my brain is like scrambled eggs. I could really mess these up, but that one's easy. It's C. Brew guy, C. Brew guy agrees. The correct answer is C. Congratulations, both of you Woo-hoo. are correct. Moving on to question number two: Which one of these is not a primary flavor? Bitter, 
Roast. Sour. Sweet. Which one of those is not a primary flavor? Tom, take us through your thought process here. I'm not sure what I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> I have an instinctual answer. Yeah, my 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 instinct would be roast. But we're talking about about beer and look, oh man, I I'm gonna go with B. I'm I'm not sure about it though. So your answer is B roast. Final answer? <sighs> yeah, only because I'm not certain. I I can't think straight. Brewery guy? I'm torn between B and D. First of all, roast is like, it should say roasted, right? I mean, we're talking about a flavor. So is it semantics or is it D sweet? Well, if you were taking the Cicerone test, it would say roast. I would say that sour. <laughs> so this is a teacher right here, for sure, with that answer. <laughs> so I would say sour fit is, is definitely in there. 100% but bitter that, is not even a question. It's like quintessential. Don't describe beer as I, I got them going. No, because it'd be... Roasting beer. And, and they use the hop to balance out the sweetness. But I don't like the word roast. It should say roasted or roasty. I say roasty toasty. Um, it's, it's a tough one. I'm going to agree with him on B. Both of them went B. The correct answer is... It is oh roast! Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, they can sleep easy tonight. I was 50-50 <laughs> between sweet... And yeah, that'd be if tough. anything, Tom, this should teach you to trust your gut. Even, <laughs> I trust even, him. I trusted my gut. Even, Look where it got me. Even got me on the stupid couch. Filled with bacteria. Drinking ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, dude. Uh, question number three. <laughs> now I can't read because my eyes are watering. Uh, which off flavor are you most likely to encounter if a draft system has not been properly cleaned? Ooh. We call these in the industry the blackies. Oh. Is it buttery? Is it skunky? Wait, how would Sean Connery say that? Skunky. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, papery or astringent. Tom, what's going to happen if you got dirty pipes? I mean, you can relate, but... <laughs> I mean, you should end the show with that right there. I may have peeped. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's over. It's over. Um, so... <laughs> I would the the flavor that I get, and I know that taste. I, I can clearly imagine it's it's something you can't forget. To me, it's like I would describe it as like like dirty mop. <laughs> it's disgusting. So the closest to that I would say would be C, but I'm not sure about astringent. I don't think that goes along those lines. So I'm gonna go with C papery. But, I mean, I know that flavor, and oh, it's a terrible flavor. What do you think, brewery right guy? Tom Wait, says it's know, papery. You know the flavor of papery or no? No, I think he knows know the, the flavor, flavor of dirty, dirty tap lines. lines. Yeah. I'm not sure that any four, any of those four really fit it well. Yeah, so I've never heard of beer described as papery, and I've heard of all the other three. So for me, it was process of elimination. Okay. Yeah. So you both agree, paper? Yeah. Wow, you guys are on the same page tonight. Paper or cardboard, like you, like we talked about. Well, wet, cardboard, wet, yeah, yeah. Wet cardboard, yeah. But I mean, that's more of like a dead bottle conditioned beer. Yeah, to me, it's like it's like dirty, a dirty mop. Like they didn't, they used so a dirty sponge. So usually, what happens on those tap lines is there is a infection brewing. Yeah, astringent. And it's going to be bad. <laughs> Wait, I thought it... Die, 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 die. No, I thought it was what's not on the... Not flavored. No, no, no. Most likely to encounter. Which oh, I thought it was most, most likely to likely not to encounter. To encounter. Oh, if they're oh dirty God, lines. I they messed that one up. Dirty lines. Mm. Dirty lines. Well, did you hear that correctly or no? Didn't uh, Alan Thicke's son know. sing a song called Dirty Lines? All right, moving on. <laughs> How often... In the industry, Tom... This is tough, because you're not in the industry, so I feel bad about hitting you with these. But, in the industry, how often must a draft system be cleaned? Once a week? Every two weeks. Once a month? 
every three months. I'm not happy with this question because I don't think it's fair. It's ridiculous. N the layman wouldn't know this. You would have to study to know this. And really? Yeah. Do you know this question? Do you know the answer? I just assume the answer. Okay, let's see what happens, kids. And it, this is this is a must. Are there laws about this, or is this? It's, uh, it's like a, a standard. It's a it's a standard. It's an industry standard. Okay, then I'm gonna ask for a two weeks. Okay. Is that A? Because I can't say. No, A, a is, is once a week. One week, once a week. B is every two weeks. C was once a month. D is every three but months. But you're throwing me off by saying that you would have to study. Why isn't it obviously as much as possible in the industry? So then your thought process is once a week sounds crazy too much. Correct. So why don't we go with two? Mm -hmm. Because it's not like we can use logistics and knowing history because like B said, we'd have to study it. Oh, I didn't realize I, I gave food for thought here. I was just commenting on So then at that point, I, I mean, I got to disagree with Tom at some point tonight. All right. My instinct is A, but I'm going to go away from my instinct and go with C. So you're doing once a month. Tom said every two weeks, yeah. correct? The correct answer is B, every nice two job, weeks. Nice job, dude. Now that that would change is if you have a kicker in there too, like the little the little line pulsing machine that constantly pulses your lines that keeps them clean. Mm -hmm. So if you have that, does that also mean every two weeks? Yeah, like I said, it's an industry standard. Okay. okay. Yeah. So there are variables, but it's like an like if if you want, if you're, if you're a professional and you care about the product, this is the standard. It's like an unwritten rule. Yeah. All right. Last question. All right. Here we go. What's an effect of serving beer that is too cold? You don't taste the damn thing. Uh, the consumer will experience less aroma and flavor. Is A, it will be overly foamy at the tap. Is B, all the above. C, uh, the retailer is something. Man, I can't even read that. The retailer is wasting money on the electric bill. It will taste sweeter. Uh, I wish that one of the options was brain freeze. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, uh, I, th I think that A and B are both correct, but A is the obvious one to me. If you serve a beer that is too cold, then you're going to cut down on the on the aroma and flavor. Okay. And I think you agree yeah, with Yeah, he obviously nailed it. So let's just knock that out of the park. Yep, you guys are right. So hey, pretty good. Um, nice job, Tom. You too. What, what did we nice do? We guys, you guys knocked, four, was it four for five? Three for five? Something, something good like that. Yeah. You guys are yeah. doing well. Yeah. Uh, so we like doing this every week. I'm glad you, hopefully you guys got to play along and enjoy. I see Rags. I didn't check on Rags' answers, but um, yeah, good stuff. Maybe one day you guys can be a Cicerone. So um, in the mix is we give me the weird voodoo signals. Let me know that we've reached that magic time. Hope you guys enjoyed tonight's episode with our special guest, Brewery Guy. Hit him up on Instagram and his YouTube channel. And then we also got, unfortunately, Tom is on the AL cam. <laughs> but the good news is he sees the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And he's moving back. Now, guys, I have some things to chat about. Let's talk about May 20th. Because we haven't talked about May 20th. Hold yet. on a second. May 20th? What do you mean May 20th? That's just two days before another very important day, B. Yeah. So, I'll give you a second. Get your desk calendars out and grab your Sharpies. I'll wait. Okay, here we go. May 20th is a Thursday night. Um, let's see. We haven't done a lot of these this year. Field trip! Yeah. We're going to Wellcrafted in Lansdale. We would like you to come out to Wellcrafted in Lansdale and join us because we are doing a field trip to Wellcrafted Brewery in Lansdale. Why, you may ask? Well, A, they're awesome. Super beers, great food, great people. If you don't know them and you can't join us on the field trip, you definitely want to tune in that night on May 20th because they will be joining us at the block party on the 22nd at Round Guys. So we want to introduce you to Well Crafted, let you know what they're all about. They are going to be talking about their whole vibe. The 22nd is the block party at Round Guys. Oh my goodness. Oh, so, yep, there we go. Well Crafted, live show. Stream it live May 20th, 730. We will not be behind the bar. We will not be out camping. Tom will not be setting the world on fire. We will 
be at Wellcrafted, and we would love for you to come join us. Um, feel free to DM us for details if you're interested, but it is going to be a fun, fun night. And they are right in downtown Lansdale. Those of you who don't like driving, oh my God, the train station is right across the street from Wellcrafted. You can ride the R5 down Lansdale, hop off the train, walk over, have a couple beers with us, hop on the train, and head back home. Super duper. 522, block party at Round Guys Brewing with Wellcrafted and Stove and Tap and a tavern to be named later. We're <laughs> There's bringing a few it, more, yeah. We were bringing it all together, um, and we're really... I have most of the details down. I'll be putting some information out this week. Um, some of you already signed up and said you're coming. That is awesome. Um, June 4th. Tom, June 4th. All these days are amazing. I'm super excited, but June 4th is another great one. We're all going to hop in the big giant mystery machine and head down to Chester Springs, PA, where we are doing a live show from... Levante Stables, and we'll be hanging with one of the owners at the brewer's table and talking about all the beer and amazingness that is Levante Brewing. So, guys. And that's Philly Beer Week, so you're hitting two right yep, there. Double, that's awesome. Double shot. Ooh, you're doing a lot of cool stuff, guys. And we want you to come out, which is why we keep talking about liking and subscribing, because as we um, as our name gets out there a little bit more, every time I call one of these brewers, they're like, oh, yeah. I heard about you guys. Yeah, let's get together and do something. That sounds like fun. So that really helps, and that's awesome. So We've also had, had the exact opposite. Oh, I've heard about you guys. Click. They usually say that about Tom. <laughs> Smash those like buttons. Yeah, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And while we're at it, you're on the YouTube channel. You know the Facebook group. Instagram, aim lowest. I'm all out of words. Tom, Send your friends. And, make, make up fake accounts. Sock accounts? You're okay care. with sock accounts? Send the socks. Yeah. It's, a, it's a it's a sick man's wish. <laughs> and that brewery guy, both on YouTube and Instagram. Hit this guy up. Look, the more the word gets out there, the more people that join the crew, the more everything gets easier. We can do more things. More people want to hang out with us. The bigger parties we can throw, the more things we can invite you to. And look, look I'm seriously, that block party, man, I want to see a, a lot of people whose names are in these comments. You guys are part of our core group. You're here every Thursday. We love you. We appreciate you. Come out and drink for us. I am lobbying hard to get the Low Expectation Snack Pack on the menu at Round Guys that day. The Low Expectation Snack Pack is a flight that Tom and I get to pick of four beers and a Seattle dog. If you haven't had a Seattle dog, I'm going to talk about it next episode. You're going to want a Seattle dog. So, ladies and gentlemen... Once again, I'd like to thank Brewery Guy for coming out tonight. Cheers, brother. He's a super dude. I appreciate him coming out tonight. And Tom, Clear Liquids, I hope you feel better, buddy. I miss you. Mm. Yeah, the bar's not I the same better. without you. You miss me <laughs> four feet away. Well, six feet, because I don't know if that stuff's contagious. And, <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. I just want to say thank you for episode 23 coming out. What did we drink tonight? All the... Bottles. Cheers, guys. Low expectations. Get some.